Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey, everybody. So today we are going to talk about how much support you should offer on software you are selling. Sounds awesome, man. Hey, everybody. So it's Jackie is Stook here from Copenhagen. Yeah, I'm Joe Glines out of Dallas, Texas. So yeah, today we're going to talk about how much support we think you should offer when you're selling software. We have been struggling with it and we have talked about it back and forth. And the first one we have here, does it matter if our tool is a subscription-based one or a perpetual one? And to me, at least, it, it does in some cases, not, not, maybe not in the initial situation where people are struggling to use or get your stuff up and running or they're in doubt of how to use it and stuff like that. Fair enough. Do some kind of support there. Try to have pre-made stuff maybe, but it's, it, it's maybe worth doing a little there. Um, but after that, if they're coming back to you after months of usage or after a bought it at Christmas and now it's summer. How many hours or how long of a amount of, of FaceTime, I was going to call it, uh, do we actually want to do on supporting people like that if it's a perpetual one? Fair enough, it's a subscri- subscription one. I'd say they're paid you over time and it's Probably one of the reasons you have a subscription in the first place, place is to have people stay with you. And if for some reason they've gotten a new computer or a new device, whatever it was, fair enough. Give them an amount of help, I'd say. Yeah, it's, I think it's interesting um, to think about it with, with perpetual tools and, uh, you know, things that you have around forever and you how often do you, if you, you start off using it, some definitely uh, often there's some startup help, right? That you need a little help with. But after that, it, it usually probably flattens out, right? I, I would think, like you said, unless you change devices. Um, the, the next one, though, you know, it's an interesting thing is like, I, I think there is a correlation to how much you're charging for the software, right? If you're charging hundreds of dollars, then people are going to have some, it's, you know what a good similarity is? Is if you're going to Walmart to buy something versus, Let's say you're looking for a camera and you go to Walmart to buy something. You're not looking for a lot of support, right? You expect a good price, maybe someone to point in the right direction, but not a lot of support versus if you go to a high dollar photo place that sells these digital cameras that cost a thousand dollars or more or whatever, you expect them to be supporting you a lot, right? In, in that purchase. So it's very similar in that sense. If you've paid a lot of money for something, by all means, you better be, a, be there to back it up. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say we, we had an experience uh, maybe a few years ago with, with uh, buying a bicycle for my, uh, my oldest daughter. And we went to the bicycle store, a local one, and he, customer service all over the place, right? And he found multiple bikes he could try and helmets and gear and stuff like that. And she was riding down back and forth. And at one point, my, my wife was like, it's it's pretty pricey that bike. Should should we go home and look on the internet? Uh, I was like, no. You you know what? I I don't know. We might be able to save um, amount of, but in this case, this guy he made such a yeah, and he's earned it. Yeah, an effort without actually s- trying to sell us this stuff. He was just helping us. I mean, fair enough. It was still in a selling manner, but yeah. So. It does kind of correlate. Yeah. You have the other one here uh, with what are other companies doing? Right. If, if you have competition in your space, which you have in most spaces, if if other, other companies ain't doing any support, it might be a good selling point. And if you're saying you're doing support, you should do some amount of support. If other companies are doing absolutely nothing, you could probably also do absolutely nothing or something equal to that. If other people are supporting the heck out of this with live calls and remoting in, 
then you'll be probably hard pressed to follow along if you don't do at least something similar. So. Well, I agree with everything you just said, Jackie. The little caveat I would say, and it reminded me, it's this is way back to my undergrad, which was a long time ago. Um, Ian, I remember in my consumer behavior class, my professor saying, well, what if you were selling a magic pen and someone sold said for a dollar, this pen will, you know, you can write in 80 different colors, including invisible and blah, blah, blah. And it's a dollar, right? You'd probably buy it for a dollar. And if it didn't work, you'd be like, it was a dollar. You know, it's it's not the end of the world. I think that that low end price point, you don't even, it does just doesn't matter too much of what everyone else is doing. It's such a low price point. And of course, this depends. Price, price is all relevant. Uh, 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 relative. Relative, thank you, geez, uh, to your customers, right? Of like, you know, if you have a high-end market, a few dollars is not a big deal at all. Uh, even $30 could be nothing. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so it, it is contingent on that. Um, and then, you know, like, the other one I was thinking, though, is like, let's, and it does kind of tie back into what are you paying for? So let's say Facebook, right? Or a lot of stuff with, with Gmail and things, right? These are things that we don't pay directly a penny for. And for the most part, they don't offer live support. Right, they they offer FAQ type things, um, and you can Google and use YouTube. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, and, and it gets back to yeah, what do what do um, people expect? Right, or do they have high expectations? But I think that's the other one is is uh, it does get back to is what are the other co competitors doing? Uh, setting expectations, um, and you know sometimes you can just have a, a forum or find some what do you call them uh, uh, evangelist type you know, of your customers to help support people, right? That, that'd be another one. And having a forum, uh, I definitely, now this is one you and I have chatted on this, some on the side here, having a place where, where you can post your answers that other people, not just the person you're helping, can see is a great way. That way it gets leveraged, right? Like, hey, I'm going to spend time helping you because I know there's 80 people like you and I'm going to spend the time. So that way, at least half of those other people, I'm not going to have to help or I can at least, I can... Half of them I don't have to help, and then the other twenty percent I can point to this answer and say this is the answer. They'll you know they don't find it on their own, but they'll use it. Uh, but yeah, there are some great ways to support people that doesn't take too much work on your end, a little bit up front, but in the long run, it's just so much simpler. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm kind of unsure which one we've gotten to here. Um, yeah, it's a blend. Yeah, but but I'd say we we got into the one where we were saying large companies. Right. right, because you already mentioned Microsoft and, and Google and Gmail and stuff like that, that ain't doing anything much. To do. Okay, there's a store you can go down there, but it's not Apple that's truly paying for it. It's a store they have a license to sell Apple products, and they're making some kind of money off of that, but it's not Apple actually giving you the support. Um, and it's the same for most other big companies like that where they're doing software, right? It's it's other small franchises actually having a business and doing support um, that way. Whereas with small companies, which is the next one we have on here, do people actually expect support from them, right? If, if it's just someone in their garage, how how are you putting yourself full out there. Are you making a fancy website and um, acting as if you're some professional big company without people having any idea of your scale? It, your team might be one, your team might be 12, your team might be 25. They can't see it off of wherever you're selling it. So either you have a great about us page or you make live videos or you have a blog whatever type of thing you have to let your end users get an idea because it i've seen it with some of my products where if the price point is low we talked about price being relative to some people right and i sell the stuff uh, worldwide at the same price point because I didn't want to try to differentiate here people have less and here people have more I just set it at one price point 
And that means that maybe someone in the US found the amount to be low over a one month period or whatever the, the period was. Whereas someone from, I don't know, I'm just saying like uh, Indonesia or something right. like that, right. uh, would probably find it um, at least somewhat expensive. Right. They, they would still be willing to pay it, but in their book, it would also be a high enough price point for it to entitle support. And uh, in that aspect, it's, it's hard to cover all parts of that. I'm not sure how the big, big companies actually do that. No, I, I, it's more, it's, yeah, it's a really good question. I, I think it's tiered and, and which is what, especially the bigger companies, they will, for a really large, I know when I was at TI, you know, we, um, Texas Instruments, um, $40 billion company in semiconductors, right? Our clients, when we would order stuff, they really paid, you know, we had really good service and something because we spent a lot of money with them, right? So they really, you know, we had a lot of access to help and support. Yet, um, for, for other things, we were a small potato to them. And so, you know, they wouldn't offer us you know, a different company or even the same company on a, on a whole different product line wouldn't realize, but look at us as a big company, right? As a big um, opportunity. And so they're like, hey, there's the, the online forums, right? Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd, I'd say that's one of our sub points here as well is that, you know, people might expect some kind of support or they may not, but, at least smaller companies need to follow along as the bigger ones with uh, FAQs, videos, maybe a forum. The, the issue is with forums is that they're, they're very prone to spam bots and stuff like that. Uh, but Arahatki, one of our main languages, at least, wouldn't be what it is today if it didn't have a forum. It, it was the place to be. Currently, there's lots of places to be. There's podcasts, there's chats, there's all kinds of places. But without the, the forum over the last, I'm not even sure, 10 plus years, um, it, it's been the backbone of a lot of it. 100% agree. Yeah, the... The users, more importantly, right? The forum is great, but it's the, the users that hang out there and are willing to help people. That's, and it's really support, right? It's just done by people that are volunteering their time. Um, now we both use easy digital downloads and I know from, from talking to you and stuff, and I've dealt with them a little bit too. Their support is really good. You know, they're, they're usually on it and help you and have really good stuff. And it's, I think they do get, which you mentioned earlier, you can use support as a way to differentiate yourself. Now, What's funny is, because I've spent a lot of time on their website, they don't really stress how good their support is, which I think they should be, right? They should be really promoting that because once you experience it, you go, wow, it, oh, a person actually got back to me, you know, soon. Um, and it's a person, not just a AI bot or something. Yeah, I'd say years ago when I was first starting out and I had an issue with, with some piece of plugin, whatever it was, we ended up setting up um, a guest log in with uh, very restrictive access to my thing, mm. which they then had access to for seven days, I think, um, and tried to figure out the issue, right? They, they weren't admins on my site or anything like that, but they had access to a fair amount of things without them being able to clean me out, which uh, they probably wouldn't have done anyway. But I found it to be one of the things that I'm not willing to do much of, that personal up there investigative support without the customer. Whereas like, okay, that's that's just a step further, I'd say, well, right? It's, um, so yeah. Awesome. Well, I, I think that's a good summary overall of, of how, how much support you should offer and you definitely should have some. Right. There's a lot of different ways to do it, but, uh, you know, it kind of depends on your pricing situation, the, this, and what the competition is doing. I think those are the two biggest things. So awesome. Yeah. Good talk, Jackie. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Bye.